My name is Michael, and this is the Curiosium. This video began as an intro to wire making, but has grown enough that I've decided to make it a separate prequel. So let's jump in the Wayback Machine and travel in time to early November of 2018. This is when I started following a few people in a loose-knit maker community on Twitter, including, among others, Emily Velasco and Mohit Voite. Mohit had been building these amazing circuit sculptures using brass wires and rods to connect electronic components together, and Emily was fiddling with little CRTs she'd pulled from viewfinders of old video cameras. Shortly thereafter, Emily's fiddling evolved into a project that turned one of the tiny CRTs into a really cool circuit sculpture she named the Selfie Cube. When she shared her finished sculpture on Twitter, she mentioned that the design was partially inspired by Mats Ingström's freeform Nixie Tube Clock and the creations of Mohit. This was the first I'd heard of Mats. A quick search revealed that the clock is named Lethal Nixie Cube, alluding to the fact that there are some fairly high voltages in there to drive the Nixie Tube. Voltages that someone could be sorry they touched if they had a mind to do so. Three people making art and science. This was getting interesting. Then about two weeks after Emily posted her selfie cube, there was a buzz on Twitter. Hackaday.io had announced a circuit sculpture contest. According to the contest details, it was in part inspired by Mohit and Eirik Brandel, another new circuit sculptor to check out. After the announcement, Emily and several other people I follow, including Dean Segovis and Dave Darko, announced they were entering the contest. That was it. I had to join the fray. As time was relatively short given that I had never done this before, I decided I'd better get started right away. For the electronics, since instant recycling or upcycling is kind of my jam, giving a dead or disused thing new life as an electronic sculpture seemed the perfect path. I quickly found a used flashing light toy that came from one of those dollar stores. These toys have batteries glued inside so when they run down you're expected to toss them in the trash. This one had lived a good life, waving, flashing, and entertaining children until the batteries failed, at which point of course I saved it. Now that that was settled, I was faced with what kind of metal to use. Brass, bronze, copper, tin copper, even aluminum and steel are reasonable choices for these sculptures. Copper is the best conductor of these, but visually not always great, as it does oxidize, unless a patina is what you're going for. Brass and bronze are very attractive and can give sculptures a more refined appearance, and while they are worse conductors, they are stiffer, stronger, and better suited for structural parts. Fortunately, the short runs of wire and larger diameter often used make the conductance issue relatively unimportant, unless you're winding inductors or transformers. The only problem with brass and bronze for me is they're harder to find as recycled wire. Have I mentioned my jam? It was becoming clear that if I wanted recycled wires and rods of brass and other alloys, I would have to make them myself. Making my own for this circuit sculpture would have been awesome, but it would have taken precious time I didn't have, so I ended up sourcing them from a local hobby store. With the electronics, some brass rods and brass and copper wire in hand, I was ready to start building. But what? I really didn't have a plan. Looking at the square stock, I immediately thought it would look better if it were twisted, so I set about twisting it. Right away I realized this was not going to work out of the box. After a few twists, the rod would break. Not to worry, I knew why. Brass work hardens pretty quickly, and this was already half hard. It needed to be annealed. Annealing in this case means heating it to a dull red, then quenching or allowing it to cool. Quenching in what's called a pickle solution is best because it helps remove scale and tarnish. But for long wires, I didn't have a proper pot to pickle in, so I opted to let it cool on its own and clean it later. Once it was annealed, I twisted it using two pair of pliers. I held the wire on the twist with these nylon line pliers to protect the surface, and twisted just past the twisted part using flat nose. Twisting the wire also work hardened the metal and returned it back to about half hard. Perfect for this work. Once twisted, I started thinking maybe I would make some sort of tree, so I coiled the wire into a flat spiral and then pulled it up from the middle. I wanted it to taper off a bit better, so I made a second smaller tree with smaller rod to go on top and soldered them together. I didn't really have plans beyond the tree and flasher circuit until I found this recycled screen. The moment I saw it, I knew what I was going to do. I cut a 4x4 four four inch square and deformed it with my fingers to create a miniature landscape of rolling hills. After it was deformed, I used 1 16th inch round brass rod to create a frame around it by bending the rod to fit the deformations and soldering the screen to it every inch or so. These rods come in 12 inch lengths. They weren't long enough to make it all the way around the screen, so to continue and close the frame, I soldered on a second one using a scarf joint for strength. I think in the future I'll try brazing them though. I really had a lot of trouble keeping them from remelting and coming apart as I would work around them. 
Once I had the tree in the landscape, I realized the screen wouldn't be strong enough to hold the tree upright on its own, and the idea of roots came to me. For that, I would need some underground space for those roots to be formed. I bent more 1 16th inch rod into a frame for the base, squaring it using graph paper, the cruel master, to help me line things up. To connect the top and bottom frame together, I cut some vertical pieces and made fish mouth cuts in the ends so they would more tightly fit the rods of the frames. After some jigging and soldering, I had my underground world to fill in. I used copper roots to contrast with the brass of the above ground world and performed a bit of metalwork to taper and rough them up. After a few roots were in place, I pushed the tree through the screen in the right location, held it straight, and soldered it in place. Now things were starting to take shape, and I needed to decide how I would attach the circuit board and the LEDs. What better place for the circuit board than underground where the roots had grown around it and tapped into its power for the lights? The circuit board uses the plus side of the battery as the common lead for the LEDs, so I attached the roots and, by extension, most of the sculpture to that. I then bent the roots around it to give it that tangled up look. The LEDs that came with the toy were kind of blocky, so I looked in the scrap electronics for some inspiration. I found tiny LEDs on old motherboards, hard drives, and other electronics that were much more to my liking, and carefully desoldered some. It took a bit of finesse to get the first one soldered to the top of the tree, but I finally pulled it off. Now all I needed was a way to get the other side connected to the circuit board without touching anything. I didn't want any obvious insulation, so I decided to run a tiny flowing brass wire down the middle of the tree. To get it through the screen, I created a feed through using a snip of clear insulation wedged into one of the holes of the screen. Once I had the first tree, things moved more quickly. I fashioned two more using a little creative license, some wire and a scrap from another project. The circuit actually had an output for a fourth light, but I was getting a little stressed about time. I tried all the modes on the circuit with three lights, and it wasn't really noticeable that one was missing, so I decided to stop making trees and finish everything else. Adding another tree and doing some things I didn't get to do can always wait for a snowy day. The power and mode switch came from an old circuit board, and it was a beast to get loose. Thanks to my Dremel, I was able to cut around it, dissect the remaining circuit board, and desolder the pieces. Soldering it to the base worked out really well. One interesting thing happened while attaching the circuit board to power and the mode switch. I was digging through my wire bin and found some stranded wire I had rescued from a complicated transformer. When I tried to solder the ends, I discovered that each strand was individually coated with enamel. They were insulated from each other. This gave me the inspiration for the final route. Multiple strands of wire twisted together into a two-signal strand. I didn't have time to mount a battery holder to the sculpture, so I soldered a small tube near the switch and ran the wires out through the tube to attach to power. Installing a real battery holder is another project for that snowy day. All in all, I think it came out really decent for a first project, but I know I'll get better and, of course, build my own electronics. In the end, 83 people entered the contest. Three people won $200 USD cash prizes, nine received runners-up $100 USD gift codes to Tindy, and two received an honorable mention. One of those honorable mentions, Best Metalworks for Going Far Beyond Soldering Wires, went to me. Not bad for my first try. On top of that, two people I know won prizes. Dean Segovis took one of the top prizes with his Audio Man, and Emily Velasco grabbed a runner-up with her Atari Punk console. One notable name that was missing from the list of entries was Mohit Boite. I asked him why he didn't enter the contest, and he told me that he tends to avoid contests, but also being named as one of the inspirations of the contest factored into his decision not to join in. I'm just really happy to see so many people get into making art with electronics and learning about so many new people who are into it. Now that the contest is over, it's time to get my wire making skills back up to speed for my next sculpture, and that is what this video is really leading up to. There's a long list of things I'd love to cover, but I plan to start small, recycling some brass, making wire, and using it in a project. You should find links in the description for the people and things I've talked about here, and if I missed anything, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment, it really does make a difference. If you want to help me make more videos, you can start by subscribing and ringing that bell. This tells me people are interested in seeing more, gives me more privileges on YouTube, and tells YouTube it should be offering my videos to more people to watch. And if you'd really like to help, you can donate a dollar or more per video on my Patreon account. By supporting me on Patreon, you gain access to discussions, previews, upcoming videos, and exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. And you also help finance this work. Thank you for watching.